Konnichiwa. Gorkasti yokuso. Do you speak in... Do you speak in Japanese? I think he's been binge-watching that uh, Japanese horror game. So, uh, everyone, welcome to the Gorkast. <laughs> Hello, and this week on the Gorecast, we're sitting down for a quick interview with Luna Wolf, who has Clash House 2 coming out, um, prim premiering, premiering, premiering on the 22nd of January. How are you things? Congratulations, we're all very, very Thank proud. Very much. proud and shocked. <laughs> Good job, sir. Luna, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Ah, not too bad. So the the thing with Slasher House too, unlike a lot of the the, mo the movies that we've had people on to have a chat with them about, we haven't had the actually opportunity to see got this to one see yet. it yet. We're basically running off the trailer. Running off the trailer and a little bit of background story. Uh, so in the trailer we have action, action. We've got swords. Yes. We've got Luna with red hair. We've got a muscly guy. I don't know red hair. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Got Luna. <laughs> you got my ass in there. I knew. So, yeah. you got my ass. <laughs> what are you gonna say? <laughs> I think that's a good crack. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so uh, we also have a muscly guy who kind yes. of looks like Bane, but he's only got one eye. Ah, and now got... I get your dead shot reference. Yeah, the one eye. Yeah, the yeah. one eye. Yeah, but so did Ezra. Yes, that's also true. That's also true. Baby. So, anyway. Tell us a little bit about the movie, because other than those amazing facts, I'm a little bit in the dark. Well, Slasher House 2 is like a follow-on from Slasher House. Um, it's the story about Red and how she faces her demons, so to speak. Um, my character is kind of like a sidekick character, but I can't really tell you too much because obviously the, the trailer doesn't show too much, so I don't want to give it too much away. Very but it's action packed, it's, there's explosions, <laughs> there's rug burns on your knees. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and you just basically have to see it. It's so cool. So from the trailer, we see a lot of action. Just wondering, how deep does the plot line go? Um, it is quite a deep plot line. Um, I mean, I've only seen it all together once, and it is pretty awesome. Um, right at the end, there's a bit of a, an awesome twist as well. So, yeah, watch out for that one when you no actually get twist. to see it. <laughs> you cannot go wrong with a twist. So, also, as we previously mentioned, there's a lot of action. Yes. So, I'm assuming you're involved in a lot of action as well. So, was there? did you have to do a lot of choreography or anything like that for it? Stunt double? Um, Mostly, mine was very, very short-lived action. Um, I did all my own stunts. Um, very well done. Thank you. <laughs> um, like I say, rug burns on your knees, bruises, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, the most part of the choreography and everything was done by Francesca, the lead, um, who plays Red. And she basically, she nails it every time. It's, it's so awesome to watch um, on and off screen. So, yeah, she did really well. Yeah, really looking forward to actually seeing it when it comes out. Uh, so speaking of when it comes out, so yeah. we know it's premiering at, I can't remember the name of the film festival. It's called Horror on Sea. That's it, uh, Horror yeah. on Sea on the 22nd of January and it's going to DVD release. Yeah, um, it premieres on the 22nd of January um, at Horror on Sea in Southend. Right. Then we're hoping to get um, a tour that is going um, UK wide, and we're hopefully getting screenings at Swansea and Birmingham, and then after that is going straight to DVD. Um, those of you who want to secure your DVD now, the campaign is still going. Um, it's on Indiegogo, and yeah, um, there's also available on there the comic book as well. Oh, amazing! Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, as as like a a perk on Indiegogo or. That is correct. Yeah, it's um, it's all designed by uh, the director MJ. He's really cool, and I've seen some of his work, and you really don't want to miss out on this. That's cool. So, if you want to go sign over on the Indiegogo campaign for Slasher House Two and get a free epic version of the comic and your advanced copy on DVD of the movie, you can check the link here. It's not really there now, but it will be there later. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
We're so going up. I love technology. There. Insert later. <laughs> so now <laughs> Slasher House 2 is put to bed. And yep. we're just waiting for it to come out on DVD release. What's what's up in the horizons for Miss Wolf? Um, on the horizons, there are a couple of really, really awesome um, kind of different sort of horror films coming up soon. They're mostly mini, mini style. Um, I've also just finished filming Harvest, um, which premiered not so long ago. I can't remember which month it was, but that was at the Underdog Galleries, which is, I can tell you, um, going to be available in the UK and America on Amazon. So that's pretty cool. Um, apart from that, I'm basically writing scripts and just trying to relax a little bit after this uh, epic, epic movie. It was brilliant. Did it take, did it take you long to shoot? Um, yeah, it took us over a year. <laughs> That's a long um, shoot. Wow. Yeah, it's um, it's it's been a tough one. Um, basically trying to get everybody together, and they had to reshoot most of the film um, to to begin with. Uh, so I came along quite late late in in the production. Um, it's it's yeah, it's been amazing. We've we've shot through all the seasons and. Um, yeah, the, the warehouse, yeah, it was pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked a lot about your movies. Uh, tell us a bit, of, a bit more about your background. In, uh, um, my background? Write, yeah. Um, yeah, I originally started off in the idea of um, photography, mostly doing it um, at a really young age <laughs> for, um, yeah, just for fun. And then I decided to move into the horror industry because of my dad. Oh, I've always wanted to do movies and watching Terminator and Alien when I was really, really young kind of sparked off my interest in that and following off on the Hammer Horrors. I just, I I'm couldn't look back. I'm such a Hammer Horror fan. I love it. <laughs> and why is doing this for your dad? What, what makes it significant? I think um, because we, we just had so much fun um, as a kid and... I yeah. Everybody used to say that I used to live in a dream world, not in reality. And oh, I got that a lot. I get that a lot. That's yeah. Present day. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. So why no, not? You why know. Not? <laughs> we keep telling ourselves that it'll work one day. <laughs> <laughs> reality is boring. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm guessing then, you, both yourself and your father watched movies together in horror, and that's where yeah, all the time. All the time. We always used to sit on that couch and we always used to watch films together. It was amazing. Effort. Yeah, it was um, really nostalgic. And now I get to actually be in in films. So, yeah. yeah living the dream. <laughs> That's super <laughs> totally. cool. So, seeing as you are acting in horror movies and you want to be in horror movies and stuff, if you could get to be in any horror movie ever, what would it have been? I swear to the gods, what? stop reading my Garan mind. No. Anyway, there are, so many, <laughs> there are so many for so many different reasons. Oh my goodness, how do you choose? <laughs> um, I'd say go with your favourite. Yeah. yeah. What are, uh, what I are like the you... Resident Evils and I really like the Underworlds um, simply for the fact that they're not too, too serious. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like my gore films like Saw and Hostel, but. In my opinion, too I prefer the fantasy side about. of things. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What about me? We asked her the question, shouldn't we answer the same <laughs> question? Uh, okay, if I was going to be in a horror movie. Yeah, if you were to choose any horror movie to have been in, what would it be? Uh, well, um, do you know who I always would love to have played was Wishmaster? Ooh. That's a good choice. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. I know, I know. Twice in one show. <laughs> I can read. And I know stuff about horror. Which is why you're... Winner. <laughs> uh, no, I, I just... He, he was kind of like... Where, where Freddy Krueger was kind of like that lunacy, like personified. He yeah. was like kind of more like... He had that plan. like bit of tunnel vision to it. Do you know what I mean? He, had a he was a man with a plan as opposed yeah. to a dog chasing cars. Yeah, no, I, no, I really like... I know it wasn't like the most critically acclaimed horror movie in history. Actually, it died a horrible death. But well, um, We all know critics get it wrong anyway. Critics oh. get it wrong. No, Wishmaster. If I was going to be Except anybody, Wishmaster. Society. No, get it right. we, we, I get things wrong sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, if I was going to be anybody, Wishmaster. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about you, guys? Predator. Predator? Nice. 
Nice choice. I basically, I mean, eight years old, my favourite film, pattern aspects of my life around it today. So Gadget, claw face, thing. See, epic. I, I was going to say Session 9, Can't but I'm killed. kind of typecasting myself there. So I'll go with my second choice. <laughs> session 9? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, I say it for everything. That's you're right. off session, right? So you want to be yeah, Simon yeah. then? Uh, no, uh, Christian Bale in American Psycho. Love it. <laughs> nice. That would be, uh, that's me. That's my daydream. I would actually, like, secretly, well, not secretly anymore because it's going to be I don't give a chainsaw. I, I was just going to say I would love to drop a chainsaw. Just <laughs> clean on somebody. Chainsaw everywhere. That'd be amazing. Everything. So, right. I'm pretty sure Luna wouldn't mind. I hear something calling me from under the table. Right between the legs. A little bit of time. Uh, All right. What? Join me for a drink. <laughs> Excellent. What are you drinking? I'm drinking, um, yeah, that's a secret. All right. I'm drinking crow jerrys. It's 100% organic, which worries me highly. I don't know what organic is. You're I'm drinking. I'm drinking Captain Obvious. <laughs> and I should put what Captain is, Obvious Captain? in my mouth as well. Yar, matey. Blow in a bottle. Oh. I unfortunately am driving and so have to stay sober. Rap fucking tit. You should do what I do and just live in studio too. No. No. Okay, that's fair enough. Can I agree <laughs> with that? So, I Luna. Know what Will's done inside there. We've got a little bit about the movie. The movie's going to yeah. be coming out soon. Thank you so much for coming on the Gorecast and having a chat with three random hairy lads from Limerick. <laughs> it was my pleasure, guys. It was great to have a drink or two as well. Yeah, yeah. it was good. It's Wrong. an unusual thing for the Gorecast, except for the one day of the seven days of Halloween where I had the zombie ah. juice. Thank God, it was nice. I think we should do this with yeah. all of our guests from now on. We, we should all just have a little, little tipple while we have a drink. Yeah. Just get really a little, little tipple while we have a drink. A little tipple while we have an interview. That's kind of nice. Anyway, we're all looking forward to seeing the film. Um, thanks a lot for I coming. I really on. want to see the movie. And, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Yeah, can't wait thanks to see what you come up with. And remember, check out the links below for signing up for the Indiegogo campaign, where you can get right here. <laughs> uh, you On can get point. <laughs> the comic book, yes. Pre-order DVD, yes. And I'm sure there's a absolute bundle of perks that go along with it. Yes. Okay, Luna. We'll talk to you later. And I think the best way to round off this interview is to just jump into the trailer and everybody else see what we're talking about. Yeah. Check out the big Kane guy, Bane guy, not Kane. Check out the big Bane guy. He's awesome. These guys. I guess we're skipping straight to dessert then. And we're back from the trailer for Slasher House 2. Thank you so much again for Loon Wolf coming on, having a chat Thank with you. us on the show and filling us in a little bit more about a movie that we kind of saw. But didn't see. Not for, at least not yet. However, yet. a film that we have seen, we were asked to review of, is Blood Brothers by Uncorked Entertainment. Gotta mention out, Uncorked Entertainment, 
so goddamn good. We get we get a lot of we get a lot of we get a lot of movies. We get a lot of films. We get a lot of movies, and some of them, all as we pointed out before, yeah. aren't a horror, and they go into <laughs> Sorry. it's not a it's not a horror movie category. <laughs> These are horror. This is These a horror. horror. This is a horror. As was the Laughing Mask from Uncourt Entertainment. Laughing Mask, so good. Can't even like you saw the initial review. Yeah. We all were like, uh, <laughs> Laughing Mask, so good. Yeah, absolutely amazing. But um, on Quartz Entertainment, as we pointed out, has brought Blood Brothers, which is kind of like a story of two sociopathic... No, well, you have issues with my if, initial... If I... The initials... Start Before you get into this, I think we should explain the movie. Because... It's two brothers it's decide that basically they're going to... Be serial begin, killers. Yeah, take their first steps on the path to being Creating full-on, art. you know, life-aspiring homicidal maniacs. And this film basically explores that journey, how they start out, you know, their first kill. The journey goes things. well for one, yeah. and the journey goes not so well for another. Yeah, um, and it's that diverging characteristic, I think, that was the main point of contention for you. And more accurately, how the notion of psychopath and sociopath was... Well, generally, when you have a psychopath and a sociopath, one is dominant and the other is, sub- is submissive. Which was the initial... Which was initial, and yeah. it started out amazingly. And so, as a person that studied psychology, it really draw- drew me in straight away. Hmm. Yeah. It became a flaw, and then it became un- unflawed later on. But I think you're... But, seeing as you're someone who studies psychology, I think what you're eliminating out of the thought process is that some people are lying shitbags and I feel like Thomas who's the older brother in the the story who's actually kind of the young Ralph Fiennes doppelganger yes <laughs> like literally yes he is. 100% on, I would so do it I believe that Thomas uh, initially was just kind of Once again. going with the flow <laughs> and yeah. lying and just you know oh I wonder kill some people and without blah, blah, blah. giving and too when much it actually, away when it actually came down away. to the crunch Thomas ain't got the stomach for killing no, people to be perfectly honest you not that I'm saying that I kill people I'm just saying to be perfectly honest you need to have developed the stomach for it to be perfectly honest you can see that that's one, what's going to happen with character right now from the very beginning yeah. mm. you can see a certain character dynamic and Roll anybody, reversal. anybody that is familiar with people in real life even never mind characterizations like that anyone that's familiar with this type of characterization will recognize the ticks i was going to say the the whole notion of the loud person generally not having the balls to do what they say they're going to do empty right, vessels that's, that's, make the make most noises that's it now empty in, vessels, insofar empty as vessels make the most noise sure. insofar as this film goes um there's a lot of clear influences um in regards to the way the film does is Animal. made um, whatever about that. I, I was going to say natural born killers. There's also very the lighting, much the lighting, the way. I thought the lighting was more. True yes, there, there are, there are some two. also true detective. Uh, there's, a, there actually, there, and there's so many TV show as in the flash scenes. Yeah, and also and some of the very so whole also some of the, also also outside the TV show, there's a lot of the Buffalo Bill Hannibal kind of. Yeah. I'll be honest. about the cannibalistic tendencies between one of them as well. I'll be honest. For me, it was all natural born killers, especially considering the very opening scene, the way they do the the driving in the car. At one point, there is one of the brothers in a car deliberately ticked off. He's smoking, and smoke comes out of him the same way you saw happening with um, in, with Mallory in Natural Born Killers. Oh, there are times when um. They're showing, we say, not so much a mental break, but at times of mental distress. At those scenes, they use kind of neon lights. Once again, very similar to... Now, I'm not trying to say, hey, you're ripping stuff off. I'm saying, hey, you were inspired by this. You took it and you used it well. Sorry, sorry, correct myself. Sorry. That combined with there's other aspects of the film that you can clearly see that they've taken these notions, they've moved in the wrong direction with them. It adds to a film that, to be perfectly honest, at first I was hesitant about. I mean, this thing starts off, and I'm looking at it kind of going. Oh, was it on court entertainment? Yes, well, as we said, but from a purely Fan from a, from a more court. biased, you know. Call you me a fanboy only once. They're yet to cease to deliver. To do with this, they're, you know, they're like the Ron seal of production company. Do you want to know where you got it from me? The fact that at the very beginning we had a somewhat, you know, a, a fairly familiar face actor playing a bit part. Yeah, very true. true. At the yeah. very beginning, 
Now, as it turns out, you also had a very famous actor from the horror world playing one of the main characters in the form of Ken Foray. Ken Foray. Playing Detective Homer. Oh, I can't remember his second name because to be perfectly honest, he wants Homer everyone Ralph. to call him Homer. Giz. Homer Ralph. Detective Homer. That's true. Giz. What movies was he in? Done Dead. Both Dawn of the Dead. Ha ha. Where he got Remake. to say? Where he got to say in both films the best line of that entire movie. He was in a uh, no Live Evil. He was in Live Evil. Live Evil. The crazy movie that goes from black and white to color to black and white to color with the amazing Candyman Tony Todd in it. He's in pretty much anything Rob Zombie's done. Uh, literally everything Rob Zombie's done. Uh, he's in Devil's Rejects. He's um the crazy clown guy's. Uh, uh, super brother. best friend. Uh, yeah. He's also the random black guy that's in the hundred uh, House of a Thousand Corpses kind of uh, in the shop. Hmm. He's also in the Legend of El Superviso. He's in Lords of Salem. He's in loads of stuff. Uh, absolutely. Okay, everything. this is not a re- and he's review. Also in, in, for a he's also in a, a. He's also in a ridiculously <laughs> large amount of eighties TV. Uh, uh, like anything 80s Ken Foray has pretty much shown up in anything at some point uh, at, some, at some stage or another Ken Foray has shown if you have watched anything from the 80s adverts movies television you know Ken Foray which is why to be perfectly honest when watching this film and seeing a very familiar head like that in it the first thing that strikes a chord with you is okay this is a little bit above the step of the general independent movie that you would expect no yes especially for us to receive yeah no. Yeah, they fought out for someone with a little bit of name recognition. Not just that, though. He brought a certain legitimacy yeah. to the film. It, Ken Frey has when you're always been well known for just... He, he's very well at bringing a role to life. And he he has that kind of... the Not trying to get into the ruining the plot or anything, but he, ha, he really brings that kind of... Um, I suppose mystic cop would be a good way of describing it. That kind of mystic cop um, vibe to life where... You know, there, there are scenes where you literally see him holding hands in a morgue with a corpse just trying to get the, the vibe of what happened off him, just waiting for the corpse to talk, for lack of a technical term. As I said, he brings a certain legitimacy to a film that, if you look at it, as I said, the very first thing for me was, I was watching it and it was a case of, okay, I don't know what way this is going to, if this is going to be worth watching. Okay, cool. They've got him in, they've got this guy in as, you know, druggy Danny at the very start of it. And, you know, yes, okay. druggy Danny. And then the, great the scene. film develops. Yes, we great get a, scene. Yeah. The film develops, um, we get a more, more Stone. of a... Stone. Come. That's all I say. I thought a cannibal corpse. Instead of hammer, it was rock. Hmm. But um, the film Instead develops... Face, it was hammer. But yet again, paper always wins. Not in that one. Yeah. True. Not one rock. Well, we've never gone in. Pretty sure a rock one. Rock. As I was saying, as the film goes on, <laughs> we um, get a sense of the other characters, their development, mainly the two brothers. Um, very once again drawing from touches of Psycho for a certain aspect of one of the brothers. Um, it, touches of Norman Bates because yeah. one brother. Really I wrote that in my notes. Psycho. Well done. Yeah, I actually did. Really it says the relationship yeah. between Charles and his mother is very like Norman. Which Bates. is what bring, which is what draws you automatically to the fact. The cycle. Which is yeah. what draws you automatically to the notion that this character relationship between the two brothers yeah. is going to get flipped on its head straight away. Yeah. As soon as I saw that, I went, "Oh, they, oh they right, have so a weird dynamic from... where even though relatively early from the start, you know, they both want to go killing people, but yes, it's." The steps that they take and how they are accepting those steps and their own reaction to those steps that yeah. kind of fills in that. Exactly. Now, it, apart- it's it's they put the fork in the road in a weird place. Do, mm. do you get me? Because ordinarily it's it's like, will I kill someone? Won't I kill someone? Fork in the road. This Whereas is this is kind of like, I really want to fucking kill someone. Mm. Uh, I also really want to fucking kill someone. Fork in the road. Won't get into the fork in the road, but yeah, it, it's... It, they throw the, the, the kind of preconceived Hollywood fork in the road concept that's integral to a lot of movies, but they throw it in at a very good place. They throw it in pretty much near the start, so you can have something to work with. Yeah, near the, the start, time. but the, the story and the characters are, are, are very defined quite early in the movie. And it, it's that kind of, they throw the fork in the road in early, where you're kind of also, it jilts you a little bit. You're not expecting it because there, there's a, 
there's an entire character reversal. Um, won't get super into it, but like, you know, there, there's a, a serious shift in power. Just, just to give you very little, early in the movie. Just to give you a little bit of background and on, on the basis of the start of this movie, if you ever consider any serial killer concept, there's always a dominant and a submissive. Mm. In this movie, for the so for mm. this when, movie, when this you have a sociopath flip. and a psychopath, there's always a dominant and submissive. Psychology, especially when you quote Freud, especially in his initial, which he even says in the very start of the movie, so I'm not giving the spoiler away, there is a dominant and a submissive, and they do progress from that. Mm. Personally, from a psychological point of view, was I was not the biggest fan. But then, later on, it's totally changed. The movie explains itself, it evolves itself. And at the end, I can honestly say, I love this movie. It's um, one of the interesting things about it for me was the fact that they had, as I said, this film does mainly deal with um, the characters themselves. Yeah. The acts of killing are merely things that happen. The real question is, what's going on in the heads of these people? And that's kind of where um, Detective Homer comes in, trying to figure out what's going on in the heads. What was interesting for me and what I liked about it was that it shows... Um, when you have that role reversal finally happens, it shows the inner workings to a degree of the main yeah. brother that's now taking over, his inspiration, what he envisions. In fact, at times he's hallucinating and kind of that's what leads to yeah, it's not, some, it's of not the, kind of, some of the deaths that occur. It's not kind of just fobbed over. They really kind of... Oh, no, you, it's you, great. It, it's a very detailed shift of power. He has, it, it goes from abstract reality to abstract very well which i think um for the very same, well especially which proven I think for by the the showing this type of killer work fantastically all of a sudden you're seeing okay it's not just you know some of the guys we've seen before whereby you know they're doing it because they they enjoy it or whatever this guy in this case he's doing it because in his mind he has this is his reasoning for it yeah. this is why he's doing it he's even got his own hot ass jiminy cricket yeah. sitting on his shoulder god <laughs> she's tasty for, for all the screeners we've received and all the movies we've received uh, based on, on plot lines, I find this one is the one that actually uh, gave the most effect. Yeah, it, actually yeah, gave it, a reason it, it, it for actually, why It actually happened. does. It takes you on a trip. Uh, yeah. Even though, at the initially that, I, even though I was thrown off my path, it gave an explanation later on. And they worked the characters very well as well, yeah. as in like an amazing it's, actors. It's a, it's a real up and down kind of yeah. feel to the movie, and and they do it very well where. Like the last time I've seen it done so well was like uh, Silence of the Lambs or Hannibal, where you, like by the end of it, you actually nearly feel bad for the serial killer. Do you was, know what I mean? It's kind I of was like, sitting at one point, he's right? just a guy, it's poetic. he's got a hobby. I was actually sitting, you know, on, I was actually you... sitting on at one point, kind of watching the film, going, You know what? This is for all those people that want to be a Charles but are afraid they're a Thomas, and, and, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then, and, and, and yeah, nice, and, and nice. you realize that although you have all these fantasies. Once you actually do it, realize, oh my god! Yeah, the it question is, this is not, not for me. But it turns out that stick to way too many. Not trying to sound bad, but it turns out American that TV. if you focus on your job and you keep your eye on the goal, you can always be Charles. Yeah. No matter. Yeah, as long also, as you've got your eye on the prize and you know where promise. you want to go, you can always be Charles. I'd also just like to say right now, I was kind of watching the film and I was thinking while watching it, there's two characters here and they kind of look the same. I wonder the. No, no, they're, they're two. And then it turns out, no, no, they actually are the same actress that plays Vanity and Genevieve, which is hilarious considering... It's, what uh, sorry, it's John V.A. No, it's Genevieve. No, it's John V.A. It's Vier. Genevieve, okay. No, it's John V.A. I, I agree with Thomas on this one. 45 seconds into the movie, this girl mispronounces his name. 48 oh, she, seconds she, into the movie, I want her to die, which is why I'm really happy. Hang on, uh, that, that, that. John Vier. Thomas, the point is this. Um, it's why he's really happy that Jean Vier. Genevieve. Jean po Vier. The point is this. The, name now. the characterizations, the, the fact they were able to get people that are able to, as I said, in this case, pull off two very different characters and have you actually question like whether or not it's the same that. actress because of how she's doing it. I thought that was cool. I was sitting there kind of going, oh yeah, ooh, I like her. And then, oh, yeah. in comes... Hey, you all know what I mean. <laughs> and then boom, in, boom, 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 She wasn't in, it was, the, it was her attitude, the whole she sultry had, once attitude. she turned dead, she had no top on, ever, ever in the movie. The scene boom, with, boom, boom, the scene boom. with Where Thomas, hang on, stop. 
That was a different actress. It was a different actress. John Vie. No, no, no. The one from the cutscenes. It was a different actor. You're thinking of the Muse. Nope, Sean V.A. Boobies everywhere. Nope. Then I don't know what the hell you're talking about, dude. No. Unless Sean V.A. looks remarkably like the other person. I can honestly tell you right now, Sean V.A. Genevieve. Does not get naked in the movie. Nor does Vanity. Nor no, does Vanity. not naked. She Which, by the way, no. same actress, different characters. Yeah. That actress does not... Sean V.A. is not the one from the cutscene. Why do they pick someone that looks so remarkably like the other person? Because, because that's what Because designed he... to link in. That's what Charles' vision is. Is. Oh. Do you remember I said the hot Jiminy That's Cricket? That's the glow. That's what you're thinking of. You're a hot Jiminy Cricket. No, I never thought I'd say <laughs> that. But I've never That's thought I'd say too that, much I... whiskey for you now. So, on that point. Hey, 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 hey. No, hey, on hey. that point. We're Take gonna... that back. No. <laughs> for him. No. Too much whiskey on that point, him. we're going to cut to a trailer. Enjoy. Enjoy. It's Detective. Detective Homer Gall. Not sure if you boys have heard the bad news, but one of the waitresses that worked here was found murdered late last night. It shouldn't just be any kind of girl, though. She should be special. Is there anything in there? About what? About last night. You think we're ready? We're ready. We've tested ourselves and we've tested others. I say we just push forward. Do you like what you see? You're not being a bad boy, are you? You look like a nasty little boy. The divine tragedies of life. God's love and death. Hey honey, this is the man that I was telling you about. Gosh, you can. <laughs> No regret. Not for us. Not anymore. Hey, folks, that there was the trailer for Blood, Blood Brothers. Which on was an uncorked entertainment movie. Again, one of our favorite to receive. Thank you again. <laughs> we um, actually do look forward to seeing... Um, we look anything. forward to any films that come in. But as himself has said, it's just... like w Certain people... We, we get an, in an inundatedly large amount of movies in at the Emerald Gordon Society and at the EGS. And yes. at the Gore House movies specifically. Have specifically uh, because of true, that. but it's... As I explained earlier, I'm not going to fanboy out again, but as I explained earlier, Encore's entertainment are yet to fail to impress with us. They're just constantly doing everything medium budget with high budget results, in my opinion. What Ish. they did with Blood Brothers was an amazing end result. You would not think it was a, a low budget movie. You would not even think that even alone by its cast let alone its cinematography they actually videotography they, its lighting they, they actually played the kind done. of slightly uh, they, they, they the don't expectations play, they don't play uh, to low budget film, yeah. but they, they the kind of the middle, middle ground between low budget and really high quality uh, movie they they actually kind of in my opinion play to it a little bit and kind of use the fact that they don't have 50 million of a oh. budget to yeah. throw in and but sometimes that makes it better because it makes yeah, it, it means it, that they have to actually put more effort into plot character development which i believe has done very well yeah 100 percent. as you pointed out who uh, has done criminal psychology and things like that yeah. that if you had your initial qualms with the way that um thank you charles mother, charles and thomas swapped roles but as you said when the mother kind of interjected yeah. um it all made sense. We won't get into it more than that, but yeah. like, if if, if you, can actually, you know anything about psychology or anything, it actually is very, um, plot. plot wise, you you would <laughs> it's very plot. <laughs> no, but like you would you would you would one hundred percent kind of guess 
for the sake of argument. Yeah, where, where they break the rules initially, the mother but the mother completely clears solidifies the, look, the yeah, broken the rules. Enough for it to make sense. One hundred percent. But at the end, if, if we were to recommend, lost a sign. Keep an eye out for Blood Brothers. They knock my sign down. So, um, and it's getting a digital release for something, isn't it? It's a digital release, but initially it's been released. Uh, um, we've tried looking up for the dates. The dates aren't specifically 100% floating around at the moment. Uh, it's all up in the air. I think it was a digital release of December 2nd or 4th, something like that. That's not that oh. far away. Oh. Cool. I just did my pants. The digital release was December I 2nd. I want dipped. 2016. And the DVD, uh, the DVD release is February 14th. 2017? 2017? Because we haven't caught Uncorked Entertainment. Because it was 2016, it means we... And I also want to point out time. that this is the first digital visual release by the brothers John and James Condillac. And if I butchered the names, I am so sorry. It's very common for us Irish to butcher stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it's itch. Cows, pigs, people. Lamb, meat. Anyway, on that note, I think it's about time that we brought this particular booze-filled gore cast to an end. <laughs> yes. Um, um, if been... if you think that we we've had some slight deliberations through the gore cast where we've tried to be uber professional, but looking through our hits and things, you seem to enjoy myself and Giz and Lynchy being fucked up. So, if you enjoy it's been fucked up, by all means, feel free to tweet me at, at Johnny Deadly on Twitter or grab us at, uh, at Peter Chains. At Peter Chains, or you can grab us at Gorecast on Facebook. I don't do Facebook. Twitter. You're safer that way. Giz doesn't do <laughs> social media in general, you know. I do Facebook. Kind of. You do Facebook, like Facebook. Giz isn't allowed to talk to the public. Partially business, partially uh, legal. You're bad! I saw it an advert once That's and it. stuck to my head. But if you enjoy us being a little bit more fucked up on the Gorecast, by all means, feel free to tweet in or Skype in or Facebook in or email or whatever. www.emailgoresociety.com And feel free to let us know if you enjoy us being a little bit more mangled because I feel from looking at the trends, people seem to enjoy us being a little bit more mangled. I think mangled. That sounds a little makes more, it more real. People. Trust me. You'll know when I'm mangangled. Because we're drunk all the time. Sure. Every time. We're Irish. I'm not allowed because I'm driving today. He's pretending. He's pretending. It's ice on the roads, not even ice. Well. It's wheels with chains and pedals. On so a bike. On chains, I'm not with it. On a bike. <laughs> yes, I have a bike with pedals. Baby, I'm on pedal. that slightly fatalistic note, we'd just like to say thank you for watching. And we will be back probably in a couple of weeks' time with even more... I'd go as far as say is two weeks. That's why I said probably in a couple. Thank two. you very much for tuning in for this week. And again, I'd just like to remind you that we have a Patreon page. And if you'd like to sponsor us, you can go there and check it out. We also have a website at emeraldgoresociety.com. Hey, Lynchy. I would also like you know to check that out. that link to the Patreon page. Yeah. Where would that link be? Right, right down, down at us. Top. Right down on Bainsey's crotch. You might need to get closer to it. Oh, no. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Crotch, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> Patreon page, on the other hand. Very good. Low minimal risk, maximum entertainment effort is what I like to talk about with the Patreon page. But again, okay. with, with the Emerald Gore Society... Because if you not, just grab it, it's maximum yeah. risk. But again... If with, you don't grab it, minimum risk, you throw a dollar in, we keep making shows. Yeah. Again, maximum entertainment. Again, with the Emerald Gore Society .com, we not only offer the Gorecast, we offer other segments, reviews, not only on movies, we offer reviews on anime. Products? Not yet. But it's but coming. Soon. soon. And it'll also be a podcast. I also... Alternative I, Frequency. I also, I also heard... Soon. I also heard in the grapevine. What's that, what's that in the grapevine? The grapevine. Also, I also heard in the grapevine that a lot of people that like horror like uh, metal music, supposedly. Apparently. And... I think they're intertwined. Seeing as... We here at the Emerald Gore Society slash Gorecast yes. are big fans of horror. Massive. And not trying to Massive. not trying to throw myself or Giz or Mr. Shane's into a pigeonhole, but I'm sure if you were to take a still photo of one of our Gorecast episodes and go, what music did the three people <laughs> on the Gorecast like? 
I would okay. imagine they would all say classical orchestral and or uh, Frank Sinatra. I'm a big fan of the blues and I'm a big fan of Frank Sinatra. But it would turn out that you are wrong and it would turn out that we are all big fans of metal. Heavy Kettle. metal. Again, you can and also read us through several of our pages, several of our avenues. We have several. Emerald Gore Society, we have Alternative Frequency, we have Gorecast, we have Chamber Raven. All offering different services. And we also, outside of the www dots, we also have on an actual radio station, we have the Metal Show. Actually, technically, it's not really a radio station. Well, it is a radio station. It yeah. is a radio Check station. It comes from radio station. It has an FM frequency. That's called the radio station. All oh, right, but my show doesn't go out on the radio usually because I'm on a Friday night and a Saturday weekend. You're but too honest. Go check. check it out. But again, the show. thank you very much for tuning in. And hopefully, hopefully, we get to see more of you. That's all good. Thank and as per much. usual, from one of our little more. What was that? Hellhound. Hellhound. He's, he's wandering away to hell. You and your. I won't lie to you. I still don't know what this I have three souls lined up for the damn thing. The sooner we get this on, the sooner I can feel you it. and your goof of dust. I don't know what it is, but you need to dumps. start sprinkling sprinkling the goose of dust everywhere. Goofer? No. Gooser? Gooper. Gooper. No. Gooper. No, Gooper no, dust. No, I don't. Gooper dust is to keep away. I haven't cleaned. Well, why is he making noise? That's why he's hungry. hungry. That's why they call him bitches, man. But well, you need more goofer dust, so. No, I need anyway. more souls. Again, I'm Johnny Deadly. I'm That's Giz. Mr. Chains. That is the Giz. This has been the Gorecast. Make sure to check out Alternative Frequency coming out on the Emerald uh Facebook page, which is basically a metal show. Pretty much. On yeah. a horror website. But it's all Pretty much. metal, which is all kind of horror. Alternative. Related. Anything or, alternative. In a From weird way, you can form. check out the metal show, which is on a radio station. Which is pretty much like our southern frequency, but with different kinds of metal. Because they like different kinds of metal, believe it or not. I think that'll do it for now. Three, two, one, Gorecast out!